One of the most important practices to follow in delivering software is scripting the provisioning of infrastructure. Scripted infrastructure has multiple benefits. It is versionable, self-documenting, and most importantly, repeatable. Due to it being scripted, it runs the same way every time, therefore reducing the amount of errors introduced by manual processes. Here I'm going to show two tools that can be used to scripting the provisioning of machines, CloudFormation and Chef. Both of these methods will create a Java Tomcat installation that will run Jenkins. After the script's run, Java should be installed, Tomcat should be running, and Jenkins should be accessible. So the first one that we're going to look at is CloudFormation. So this is a CloudFormation script. There's a lot more than just provisioning the instance itself in here, but we're not going to go into that in this screencast. So in general, CloudFormation is a JSON-based method for interacting with Amazon's resources, or AWS specifically. CloudFormation only works on AWS, so its use cases are kind of restricted. So now for the provisioning. So right here under web server is where the provisioning of the instance itself is done. So as you see, yum installs Java 1.6 OpenJDK and Tomcat 6. It then uses the files resource to download Jenkins war and put it in the, the web apps directory of Tomcat. It then gives the executable and read permissions to the file, assigns the owner and group of Tomcat. And then lastly, it starts the service. So let's see it in action. Now I'm going to create the stack. I'm going to give it the name of test stack. And then I'm going to upload the file, upload the, the template to S3. These are parameters that are defined inside the template. Okay, the stack is done provisioning. Now we're going to check to see if Jenkins is running as expected. And there it is. Jenkins is up and running as expected. Okay, so this is Chef. Currently what we're looking at is a uh, the Tomcat default recipe. So essentially what this is, it's Chef's way of provisioning the instance. So right here it defines what it needs to install by the, um, the operating system and then it's the works with the installs a package then it does the service configure or manipulation and then down here it works with templates so a template is essentially it's a a way of including embedded ruby inside of a text file so when chef is done working with it it puts a dynamically created text file in the location that it specifies Okay, I'm not going to go too much more into how Chef works, but I just wanted to give a quick overview. Now we're going to create a Chef node. So essentially what's happening here is we're using Knife, which is the CLI that interacts with the, the Chef server, to create an instance from these with these properties. So what's, hap what's going to happen is it's going to use this AMI, if you're familiar with AWS. It's then creating a small instance using the utility private key in the US East 1A availability zone. So what's going to happen here is it's going to create an instance, log into the instance, and bootstrap itself. So what bootstrapping is, is it's going to connect itself to the chef server so that it's managed by the chef server. the node is finished bootstrapping itself. So now we need to give it a run list. 
So a run list is a way Chef gives the instance direction as to how to prevent itself. So now we're going to add the run list. Now we need to SSH in and have it provision itself. So now we're ready to have it to run sudo chef client, which will provision it. Okay, then this is provisioned. So now we're going to see if it's a, if Jenkins is running on this instance. And there it is. So both is, both ways provisioned a Java Tomcat Jenkins installation that worked successfully, completely automated. One of the questions you ask is, which one do you use and, and why? So CloudFormation is great for AWS as for a couple of reasons. One, it allows you to use other resources, not specifically the provisioning of instant, only instances. You can deal with elastic load balancers and, and all the other AWS resources. But Chef is vendor agnostic. You can use it for any system. It doesn't have to be on AWS and it it could be it doesn't even have to be in the cloud it can be on your own personal hardware so that's that's the big difference between them um, another thing that I didn't show in the screencast but you certainly can do is that you can combine chef and cloud formation so you can leverage the power of AWS's cloud formation but also use the general purpose power of chef that was uh, a, a bit of an overview just show you exactly what you can do with with scripted provisioning tools.